Hey guys, thanks for joining me up to play games. My name is Lance, and today I'm looking at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Neomorphosis Infestation. This is a new game from Dark Gate Games Entertainment. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly one to two hours to play. It is a fully cooperative game, so all the players are working together to defeat the scenario they've chosen to go on. In the game itself, we have gone through the hot earth crisis where the temperatures rose to the point where it was very hard for us to live, and we developed technology that cooled the planet. Unfortunately, it cooled it too much, and now we are in a cold earth crisis state where the temperatures are super low, and we're trying to develop new technology that will raise the temperature of earth again or leave earth behind completely. So that's where the players come in. We play a crew of four that has gone to a exit research facility to develop technologies that are going to help us resolve some of these problems. Unknowns to the players and the crew, the research facility has come under attack by alien species and is being torn apart and its inhabitants are being killed and that's where our crew steps in. They are at the station now and trying to figure out what's going on, who these aliens are, what their intentions are and what's going on and trying to stay alive throughout this whole mess. So highlights for me in this one, I really liked the tension with this game. Not only do you have to worry about the aliens, but on top of that, the aliens actually attack the station, which is really interesting. They can attack terminals and doorways. They also could attack the walls and structures of the facility, potentially causing all kinds of emergencies where the players are going to have to make tests to try to make repairs or fix those emergencies before they go critical and cause all kinds of structural damage to the station. So the players are not only going to have to deal with with a really nasty alien species, but also handle emergencies and other crises that are gonna come up throughout the game. So the tension is always up, the players are always pushed to the brink, and really have to make some hard decisions, which I really liked. I also found the artwork with this one was really cool. I love the miniatures and the designs, and the boards in that are really well done, so I really enjoyed that as well. Of course, these are just my opinions, and this is just a prototype. This is just a sample of what the game has to offer. There's a lot of things that are going to be included in the core set that I won't be able to show you in both of my videos that I have out. Also, if you're interested, I will have a gameplay video. I'll have a link up in the corner. If you'd like to check out that and see how the game plays and progresses throughout the entire scenario, you can check that one out as well. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribing to my channel as it really does make a big difference. It helps me to continue to grow and produce these videos. And if you want to stay updated on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table and I'll show you what this one's all about. So let me start by taking a look at the heroes. So each hero is going to have their dashboard and each player will choose one or more heroes that they'd like to play. Then we have the different stats for our heroes, which is the science bonus and tech bonus when they make those tests, and the programming bonus, or the number of dice they're going to roll when they make a programming test. Each character is going to have a number of hit points, as well as their base defense, and their movement when trying to get away from enemies. Each character will also have a combat bonus and their range listed, and will have a special ability such as Robert here, who has double tap which means that when he's in a space with another hero or crew member, he gets to reroll his attack die, which can be really handy. Throughout the game, the players are going to have access to and will gain different items, such as adrenaline, smoke grenades, painkillers, instruction pads, shields, and many other items. And each one of these is going to give the players bonuses or one-time uses that they can use to help them along, either repairing, doing different actions, or just staying alive. Each character is also going to have a miniature for their figure, and these are really cool, high-detailed miniatures, as you guys saw at the beginning of the video. With the aliens, no player is going to control them. They are controlled by a special set of cards and core rules. So each alien will have their own card with all their stats on it. And currently in the prototype, there are three levels of aliens. Based on the infestation cards, we will have pods that will come out. And then when instructed by the alien activation cards, we're going to roll a die. And that is what that pod will turn into, which is the second level or the larva, which could be worms or hydras. And then finally, a lot of the activation cards at the end of the activation will cause them to morphosize into their adult versions, which are the rippers and slugs. Each alien, like I said, has stats, including their health, their defense, any bonuses for attack, their evasion rating, and the number of wounds that they do when they attack. 
Each alien is also going to have special abilities that will activate if there are more of that type of alien in an area. And then like I said, there's going to be activation cards that will have you roll the die for each pod that is in the area. And then they will also attack the walls and it'll tell you which types of aliens will attack. Finally, it'll give you a breakdown of which aliens will activate after that and what they will do, with a lot of them activating multiple times or attacking multiple things. Finally, at the bottom of the card will be any special instructions or activations, and then, like I said, a lot of the cards will also have you neomorphize into their adult versions at the end of the card. So a lot of things are going to happen very quickly, and the crew is going to have to deal with it the best way they can. Moving over to the tiles, each scenario is going to outline how to set up the game board, and each of the tiles or sectors is going to be comprised of three areas that are going to have spawn numbers at the bottom of them, and this is going to be important when the players are resolving an infestation card. Each area, as outlined in the scenario, may have an infestation card placed on it, and when the players move into an area within that map tile, then they're going to flip over the infestation card and resolve its effects. So for example, with this one, we would have a pod placed in areas one and two. So we'll place a pod here and there, and then we'd have a ripper in area three. And each one of these is going to have different layouts, such as this one here has area one, two, and four, and three. So as you can see, different areas or different map tiles are going to have a different combination of areas. Then there's going to be a lot of other effects as well. We have items that the players can pick up, terminals that the players can interact with, and do a whole number of different options that I'll outline a little bit later. And we also have doors and other items that the players can interact with, including constructible items such as this med kit here. The player must move on to that space and do a science test. And if they can beat the number on there, then they have built this item and then they will gain it. And then it'll give them some sort of an effect, such as this one here will give them a healing where they can heal one wound. And the final important piece that we have is the system information panel or SIP for short. This panel is going to help the players throughout the game keep track of the rounds, all the different stats for the walls, the doors, and the terminals, as well as their control system and any emergency reports that they have that come up. As the turns tick on, the aliens are going to be not only trying to attack the crew, but also the areas themselves and just trying to destroy the different terminals and doors and walls. And as they do this, especially the walls, they're going to initiate emergency responses that are going to damage parts of the station. Each time one of these comes out, it's going to give you the title of it and what it disables. So with this one, it, it is going to damage the release halon system. So you would have to put a marker on that. And until this is repaired, then you cannot use this as part of a terminal action. And these are the different actions you can perform when you activate a terminal, including activating the drone, scanning rooms, releasing the halon system, electrical feedback, and a number of other things that the players will be able to do. Each one of these is going to have an icon on it that will match the program dice, and the player will have to roll that and successfully pass the test in order to be able to use that action. Now, each time an emergency comes out, you'll have three rounds to, to resolve that emergency. And each crew member can only test for that emergency one time. And unlike the other tests that must all be either passed or failed in one shot, each crew member can try this, and if they're able to solve some of it, then they'll be able to mark those areas. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say Roger is going to try it, so he's going to place his marker next to it, meaning that he has taken the test, and then he will roll his dice based on his program computer. So he can roll three dice, and then he's going to compare these results and see if he matches any symbols. So he got the little beaker, so he's going to mark that he got that. And that is all he was able to do as he didn't roll enough uh, numbers to lock, unlock that, and we didn't get the diamond symbol. So then the next player, let's say that the next player, our engineer, goes ahead and tries it as well. And with him, he, he has a programming die of four, so he'll get to roll all four. And then we'll compare those as well. So he ended up getting the diamonds. And let's go ahead and say that he ended up rolling the number as well. So at that point, then the test would be passed, and we would be able to remove it from the board. But let's also say 
that it has been three rounds and at the start of this round, then this test or this emergency is going to go critical. At that point, we replace it with a warning that has hull damage and that sector must be secured. Otherwise, it's going to continue to generate emergencies every turn. And if you ever have to add an emergency and all of the areas are full, then the game is going to be over and the players will lose. And once a hull damage is in effect, there is no way to repair that, so you have less emergency slots you can place as well as the, the game goes on. Another important thing for the players is the Halon system, where you'll have to load it with a cartridge, and then at that point, then you'll activate it on the panel as long as it's not locked out. And when you do, as long as a room is secure, you'll eliminate everything in that room, both crew and aliens, and then you'll remove that cartridge. So it's a very powerful one-use ability that you'll be able to do throughout some of the scenarios. So the last thing I want to show is a couple rounds in action. So I've gone ahead and set up the game. This is just a very basic layout just to show you how this works. So each round is going to be broken down into four phases. The first phase is the start of the round phase where you're going to resolve a number of different things. First off, if there's any emergencies, we'll flip those over and then set them up. So this one is an energy drop and it's going to affect the electrical feedback. So we're going to place a marker on that meaning that we cannot use that option when activating a terminal until this emergency is resolved. And then we'll move the marker over and we have three turns to resolve this. Then if there's any other in uh, start around effects that we have to handle, we can go ahead and do that as well. If any of our characters have been knocked out or are recovering and there's a number of other steps. From there, we'll move into the crew's turn where we will start by activating one of the crew members. And we can do this in any manner we want, activating whichever crew member in whatever order we want. But once you choose a crew member, you must resolve all of their actions before moving on. So let's go ahead and start with our mechanic here. She'll go ahead and go. So her first action, she's going to go ahead and open this door. So she'll open that as her first action. Her second action, she's going to go ahead and move into this room. And when she does, there's an infestation card in there. So we have to resolve the effects of that card. So we'll flip it over, and this has us placing pods in areas 1 and 2. So areas 1 will be here, and area 2 is here. And then we'll place a ripper in area 1 as well. So we'll do that. And then we can go ahead and continue on with her turn. So she has one action remaining, so she's going to go ahead and make an attack against that pod there. To do this, she's going to check her attack value of 4, and she does have a weapon that has a range of 0 to 1, so she can target one space away from her. And then she's going to check her target's defense, which is an 8, which means that she has to roll higher than its defense with the combined, of, combined values of her bonus and the die. So she's going to need a 5 or 6 to do a wound to the pod. And she missed, so no luck. And so her turn is over, and then we would choose another character to go. So let's go ahead and go with the engineer and he'll move in and then he will also make an attack on the pod. So again, his value is four. So he is also going to need a five or six and the pods only have one health. So the pod is eliminated. His third action, he's going to go ahead and move forward one more space. Then we are on to our next crew member. So let's go with our chemist. She's going to move one, two spaces and finish her turn in the third space. Then we have our last crew member to go, Robert. So he's gonna do the same. He's gonna move three spaces, helping her out as his defense is a lot higher than our chemist. From there, now that all of our crew members have gone, we would move into the alien activation phase. So we're gonna flip over the top alien activation card and resolve its effects. So first off, we have an alien die there, which means that any pod we have to roll the alien die for. So we have the Hydra come up, so we'll replace the pod with a Hydra. Then we'll move over to the next step, which tells us that slugs, reaper, uh, rippers, and larva are all going to make attacks against the walls. So our wall's defense is 5, and so we'll start with the Hydra first. With the Hydra, he has a plus 1 bonus to whatever he rolls, so let's see what he gets. And he rolled a 2, plus the 1 is a 3 which does not beat the walls, so he will not do any damage. And then we also have the Ripper, who's going to attack the walls. And the Ripper rolls a 4, plus his 1 for 5, which needed to beat the walls, so again, we do not do any damage. 
but if we would have done damage, then we would have added another emergency to the panel. Now, with this, if an enemy does damage to the walls, then that is going to stop and we wouldn't resolve any other effects from the enemy's attacking walls. So once you have one emergency come in, no matter how many other enemies there are, they won't attack any more wall sections. Then we'll move our way down with the rippers going next. It says one ripper moves up to two areas and attacks a terminal. So it's already in the terminal space, so it doesn't need to move. So it'll roll for that, and it does damage. So the terminal is going to be flipped over and damaged. So we have to repair it now before we can use it. Then all rippers are going to move into two areas and attack the crew closest. And any closed door and route is also going to be attacked. So the ripper is in a space with the door, so he'll resolve that. And he didn't hit the door. So then he'll attack the crew. And we can choose how we want to... Uh, assign that and with the miner in there we'll go ahead and go against him and no luck there so no damage then we'll move on down with the slugs so all the slugs would activate but we do not have any currently so then we don't have to resolve that finally at the bottom of the card it says that we perform any special activation which when there are special characters or bosses out there and things like that those are going to trigger at that point Finally, at the end of the alien phase, all larvae are going to neomorphosize. So now this little hydra that came out earlier in the round is going to neomorphosize into a slug, which is their adult version, and it is a lot nastier to deal with. Then this will be discarded, and then the end of round turn will, ha or the end of the round will happen. And if there's any effects that we need to resolve at that point, we'll do that. And then finally, we'll move the time marker down one space. Then we'll go ahead and start the next round. So I'll take you through one more to show you the effects of this. So again, at the beginning of the round, we'll move our emergency down. We don't have any other emergencies to resolve. So then we're ready to move into the player's turns. So we'll go ahead and start. We're going to have the miner go as he is one of the better guys in handling melee as he has a plus five to his rolls. So he's going to start off by hitting the slug there as they can do a lot of damage. And he does score a hit, so that is eliminated as they only have one hit point. Then he's going to go ahead and hit the Ripper. And with the Rippers, their defense is also 8, so he's going to need a 4 better. And he missed, but he does have the Double Tap, which if he's in the same space as another hero or crew member, then he gets to reroll that. So he'll get to reroll. And we're good. So we do a damage, and the Rippers actually have 2 hit points, so... The first one is only damage. And then he's got one action left, so he'll go again. A miss, but he gets the reroll. And still a miss, so no luck on him. Then we'll move on. So our chemist will go next. She's going to go ahead and attack. And she misses. So then she's going to try to repair this terminal here. And she needs a 6 to do it. And her repair value is 4, so she's going to need a 3 or better. And she gets it, so she'll flip that back over. And then her final action, she's going to go ahead and activate the terminal and try to resolve this emergency. So in order to do that, she's going to check her programming, which is going to give her four dice. And she needs to roll the symbols on the emergency. So let's go ahead and see what happens. We have the beaker and we have the diamond. So we got two out of the three that we needed. So we'll cover those up and we just need one more result. Now each character can only do this one time, so she's going to place her marker there, meaning that she cannot try to resolve that emergency again. Then her turn is done, so we'll move on, and let's go ahead and have the engineer go. So he's going to go ahead and attack that ripper and see if he can do the final damage. He missed. Let's try one more time. And we got him. So the ripper has been eliminated, and he'll go ahead and move one more space into here. Finally, we have the mechanic to go, so she's going to move two, and then she'll go ahead and activate the, the terminal and try to activate the drone. So she's going to roll three dice, and she needs at least one number to come up, and she got it. So she activates the drone. He can move up to three spaces and do an action such as opening a door, closing a door, repairing a terminal or door. All right, and then his turn is done, so then we would move into the enemy's turn, there aren't any enemies currently out, so we would still flip this over. In some of the scenarios, you'll have special activations that'll need to be resolved. And then again, the final step in the round is to move the marker down. 
So I hope that gives you guys a good idea of how the game plays and helps you decide whether you don't want to back this one on Kickstarter. Like I said, this is just a sampling of the game. There's already been a lot of posts on Facebook and that showing off some of the other enemies, some of the bosses, some of the other things that are coming your way. So this is just the scratching the surface of this game. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there. As always, if you like these videos, if you enjoy what I do, please consider hitting that like button subscribing to my channel as it really does make a big difference. It helps me to continue to grow and produce these videos. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.